I'm going to start this one. What would happen if we detonated humanity's most powerful nuclear weapon at the deepest point of the ocean? For sure, tsunamis hundreds of meters high would destroy coastal cities, earthquakes would level countries, new volcanoes would bring us nuclear winter. Maybe even Earth could be ripped apart or thrown out of orbit. Well, almost. Currently, Earth's deepest known point is inside the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is a very deep valley right at the edge of two tectonic plates that looks like an upside-down mountain. It reaches a depth of about 11 kilometers, almost three times deeper than the dark grave of the Titanic. It's one of the last places on Earth for humans to explore. Pitch black and under a thousand atmospheres of pressure, it's a relatively pristine environment thanks to the absence of humans. A great place for our nuclear test. We'll use the most powerful nuclear bomb humans have ever exploded, the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, or Tsar Bomber. Its explosion was so massive that its shockwave traveled around the Earth three times and its mushroom cloud stretched 56 kilometers into the sky. Whoa. Its shockwave was strong enough to destroy everything in a thousand square kilometers, its fireball hot enough to burn the rubble. Bombs like this release such an enormous amount of energy at once that they could boil away an entire lake. And if we set off a nuclear bomb in the Mariana Trench, that's exactly what happens. Let's pull the trigger. Speaking of the Mariana Trench, in one of the last videos we saw on submarines and the mechanics of living underwater, I asked what the name of the vehicle is called that they sent James Cameron down to Challenger Deep into. And you guys let me know in the comments, it's called a submersible. There were opinions that a submersible is a type of submarine, other people said no. On that, I'm still not sure. But if you were curious about that like I was, submersible. In the first few microseconds, the nuclear fuel undergoes its chain reaction and explodes with the power of 50 megatons of TNT. A blinding flash of light illuminates the darkness of the trench for the first time in history. The heat of the explosion produces a cavity, a flaming bubble of water vapor, radioactive nuclei, and the remains of very unlucky fish. The bubble grows quickly as it vaporizes the water around it. The pressure of the bubble is immense, plowing outwards as if there's nothing in the way, sending off a shock wave that will be felt by seismic stations and whales around the world. And then, almost as fast as it emerges, it stops. On the surface of the Earth, this fireball bubble would grow to 10 kilometers the second after it's detonated as the atmosphere barely puts up a fight to hold it back. But the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. With 11 kilometers of water overhead, being in the Mariana Trench is like being crushed by a hydraulic press from every direction. Here, a second after the detonation, our bubble is about a kilometer across, when, oddly enough, it starts to shrink. The bubble overextends itself, losing pressure as it expands until the water turns it back, recompressing it. The tug of war between the fiery death bubble and water goes back and forth a few times, the bubble shrinking and growing until eventually the bubble loses for good. The pressure around it is too great and turbulent water begins to chop it up. It becomes something like the underwater equivalent of a mushroom cloud as it disintegrates into many smaller hot and radioactive bubbles drifting upwards. And as our mighty destructive blast rises to the surface, it does basically nothing. Just a small wave and a bubbling plume of radioactive warm water in the Pacific. I didn't realize that the pressure would be so strong that it would suppress the result. Huh. And now I'm wondering about the tectonic plates because having lived in California, I know that's a thing. Shout out to the... San Andreas Fault. <laughs> no tsunami will wash away Japan or California, although boats and whales oh, okay. in the area might have a bad time. Oh. The radioactive fallout will be diluted into the Pacific after a few days, although a fair amount of radioactive water and salt makes it to the atmosphere, where it collects and then rains down again. Even if the wind blows the fallout directly towards the Philippines, the worst of it probably happens over the oceans. But clearly, the real danger comes from our explosion triggering earthquakes and volcanoes, right? 
Even if we detonated the bomb right in the trench at the exact point where tectonic plates touch, probably not. The explosion would vaporize a part of the sea floor and turn a lot of sand into glass, but most of the energy goes into the water, not seismic waves. Earthquakes are already quite common at tectonic plate boundaries. And earthquakes with as much seismic energy as our bomb happen a few times a year without triggering any sort of apocalypse. But maybe it will affect the Earth's orbit. Since no mass is taken away or added to the Earth, our orbit is completely unaffected. Also, there have been well over a thousand nuclear tests in the last 70 years, and that didn't change our orbit, so why would this time be different? The strongest forces humanity can unleash are laughable compared to the forces of nature. The planet is too big. It doesn't care. So, what happens to us if we detonate a nuclear weapon really deep in the ocean? Pretty much nothing. Did you know that every okay. <laughs> bird in our videos has an owner? More than 1,000 people have got their own bird. It helps us explain things, clowns around in the background, or dies a horrible and avoidable death. If you want your own bird too and you want it to appear in one of our videos, you can get it at patreon.com slash kurzgesagt. Patreon is one of the main ways we sustain ourselves, so on top of getting a super nice avatar, you also help okay. us make more and better videos. Nice. All right. That was a surprisingly positive outcome for what I thought could have been a possible catastrophic event. I also have to be real and say that I've never asked myself the question of what would happen if we detonated a bomb in the Marianas Trench before turning this video on. But there's something he said in there that I liked, which is that despite our advanced technology, humanity is still powerless to nature in a sense. I won't get existential. <laughs> I know that some people don't like these thought experiment videos, but I really do. So if you have anything to add or expand on, please feel free to do that down below. And now I have questions that I want to look into on my own time. First of which is who owns the Marianas Trench or owns that land because I'm sure that someone's called claim at this point. Also, when is the last time that we detonated a nuclear bomb underwater? So I'm going to look up those answers and I'll link articles to whatever I find down below. It's been a while that we haven't seen anything from this channel. It's linked in the bio for you in case you want to check it out. They have another video on the same question, but how it would affect the city. And every time I'm on their page, I see that video and I've never clicked on it, but now I want to. So we'll do that in the future. And lastly, oh, a literary recommendation. I don't have one. And I think part of that is because I've been reading the same book for the past three, almost four weeks. I couldn't tell you the last time it took me so long to finish a book. And that counts the bigger books I've read, like a... A Dostoevsky or a uh, who's another artist who writes ridiculously long literature, Tolstoy or Murakami, and that's mostly due to me not liking this book. But I'm one of those people. If I start it, I'm gonna have to finish, no matter how long it takes me. So I'm gonna try to finish that this week, and then I'll have more literary recommendations for you. I would tell you the name, but I think the literary purists are gonna get offended to know that it's 100 Years of Solitude. I'll cut that out. All right, well, that's all. <laughs> Leave your thoughts on any of it, and thank you for watching with me. Bye.